I'm going to show you a ranking of the best power forward from every NBA team. You'll see why from squads 1 through 30, the depth of these big men's ability could be at the highest level of any position. This ranking is based off how each player produced so far in 2019-20, so stay tuned to find out who's the very best at the four-man spot right now. First, shout out to Big Man, listing his top five centers as Bam, Cat, Gobert, and Bead, and naming Jokic as his best center, mostly because of the fact that he's leading a third-seeded team. Question for next video shout out coming up, yearly awards for the Speaks Top 5, appreciate every answer. Number 30, Wilson Chandler of the Brooklyn Nets. Just five out of the 35 games that the 14-year vet Chandler played in, did he score in double figures this season. Wilson was a top 3 and D presence in his younger days as a Denver Nugget, but 2019-20 saw the 32-year-old Chandler struggle to bring value in Brooklyn. So yes, <laughs> is naturally a small forward, but when the snake returns, he'll likely have to fill this position for the Nets. Number 29, Trey Lyles of the San Antonio Spurs. The starter for San Antonio, Trey, only gets 20 minutes of playing time. Nothing's gaudy about his stat line. He has, however, saved his time in the league with his production. Last season with the Nuggets, Lyle shot a measly 25% from distance while taking over three of those shots per game. Despite that though, San Antonio blatantly needs an upgrade at this position. Number 28, Juan Hernan Gomez of the Minnesota Timberwolves. I need to see it for more than 14 games, but after his trade from Denver to Minnesota, Hernan Gomez was extremely efficient while putting up 13 points, 7 rebounds, and a steal in under 30 minutes for the T-Wolves. Number 27, Dario Saric for the Phoenix Suns. He was the hyped up number 12 pick back in 2014's draft for Sam Hinkie's process. Six years later, he's a below average starter now with his third team in Phoenix. Dario's solid off the bounce for his size, but his shot from deep's inconsistent, plus he struggles to move his feet guarding the perimeter. Number 26, Nemanja Bialica of the Sacramento Kings. Nemanja can take his man off the dribble and finish with either crafty jellies or unforeseen jams with sneaky hops, and at a brilliant 42% clip, pull back for long-range bombs behind the arc. He had several game winners for the Kings this year, defining what a clutch sniper really is. Number 25, PJ Washington of the Charlotte Hornets. If it hasn't already, here's where this position really starts to show itself as one of the deeper spots teams 1 through 30 in the game. Hornets fans, don't get it twisted. I believe PJ Washington will work his way into the top 5 to 10 at this position. He's ranked 25th just because of the talent there is right now at power forward, but PJ set the NBA record for most threes in a rookie debut if you didn't know. The 6'7 stretch four can position his three-point release in places unreachable for a majority of defenders. Because of that, PJ shot close to 40% from distance, which is damn impressive for a rookie. Number 24, Julius Randle of the New York Knicks. Any player that's capable of averaging 19 and 10 with three dimes is providing some value. The reason Julius ranks 24th is that this season, he's taking four threes per game, but making just 27% of those shots. And from the field overall, Julius has put up the lowest percentage since his sophomore season. Also, he doesn't average a steal or a block and struggles to move his feet defensively. He's a very solid offensive talent, but he got paid 20 million per year by New York's front office and Randall's Knicks with 16 suspended games left have only four more wins than they had last season. Number 23, Davis Bertans of the Washington Wizards. Davis fit like a glove next to Brad Beal and can space out the offense to make opponents pay for even the slightest misstep on defense with his quick trigger, and like PJ Washington, high release point. Would he rank higher if he had more impact defensively? Maybe, but the up-and-coming 27-year-old sniper should rank higher as he plays out his prime. Number 22, Draymond Green of the Golden State Warriors. So hear me out, I'm ranking him above four players in Washington, Bielitsa, Randall and Bertans who had breakout seasons. So I'm doing my best to respect Draymond's defensive impact and what he's accomplished this decade or last decade, but you're hearing a ranking based off this season and the brutal 39 and 28 shooting line that no player in this video can relate to puts a stop to that respect I can give him. His offense was terrible this season, no one can deny that, and there's other youngins who've earned a higher ranking than him. Number 21, Maxi Kleba of the Dallas Mavericks. 
a key cog keeping defenses honest next to Doncic and Porzingis. In under 26 minutes, Maxi supplied Rick Carlisle with a relied upon sniping presence. He's one of the best undrafted stories in the NBA, and ever since the 28 year old entered the league in 2017, his stock at power forward has annually risen. Number 20, Al Horford of the Philadelphia 76ers. The $109 million man should be top 15 at least. He does give his team very solid for a four man, four assists per game. However, his slow, inconsistent stroke from deep and demand for at least 11 shots that only leads to 12 points per game, in my opinion, takes away from what other players on his team can do best. He's far past his prime in Atlanta at this point, and one of our league's most overpaid talents for the foreseeable future. Number 19, Jonathan Isaac of the Orlando Magic. Luckily, the positional versatility of Aaron Gordon allowed for the Magic to maintain their occasional winning ways and not get exposed, but at full strength, the starting power forward in Orlando is the lengthy, potential elite defender and decent scorer, Jonathan Isaac. But sorry, Magic fans, he's got to play more than 32 games to get a higher ranking. Number 18, Laurie Markkinen of the Chicago Bulls. Once considered a rising phenom after a rookie campaign of 15 and 7, Chicago's finished product's output has plateaued. At some point in the stretch big's career, I believe he can get his efficiency to around 50, 40, 90, but he's still in his third season. The Bulls front office has got to give him time to grow. Number 17, Derek Jones Jr. of the Miami Heat. Everything about the natural small forward playing the four spot I love, DJJ's vertical doesn't only give him maybe the best dunking ability in game across anyone in basketball, but lockdown ability defensively. Combine that with Derek's sensational awareness, and you get the 12th most valuable defender among forwards in terms of defensive rating. So in my opinion, the controversial dunk champ has got a career of athletic dominance ahead of him. Number 16, Carmelo Anthony of the Portland Trailblazers. Fresh from the couch with Zach Collins' sideline, Portland added a 10-time All-Star to boost their depth up front back in November. Then, in his second week with the Blazers and being out of organized ball for a year, Carmelo won his first Player of the Week award since March 2014. Melo was a part of a Blazer team with pretty thin depth, but Anthony's production following that Player of the Week was still very solid and before the suspension, he was absolutely on fire. He should easily get signed this offseason after being left on the free agent market for over a year before his Portland tenure. Number 15, Paul Millsap of the Denver Nuggets. Picking the proper spots on the floor at the right time amidst the minutes your coach gives you to let your shots fly is crucial for an NBA player. The four-time All-Star in his prime and now 14-year vet Paul Millsap picks his spots at a first-class level. Only two and a half attempts from distance, the man makes 44% of his shots. Even though Michael Porter Jr. is the future of this position for the likely title-contending Nuggets, they may want to re-sign the looming free agent Millsap to stick around for another year or two. Number 14, Robert Covington of the Houston Rockets. Since his trade from Houston in 14 games for the Rockets, Cubs stunningly averaged two and a half blocks per game. Then, stretching out the floor efficiently, Robert shot eight threes per game at a near 36% clip in those outings. Here, the Beard trusts Covington to hit the biggest shot of the night to help win a close game against the Jazz. All throughout that game in his entire stretch on the sixth seed out west, Robert hit timely shots to do exactly what the three-point obsessive Rockets expected from him. Number 13, Christian Wood of the Detroit Pistons. Detroit's explosive foreman forces anyone protecting the paint to get out of the way when he's attacking the basket. Every aspect of the undrafted product from UNLV I'm intrigued by, as at just 24, Christian's game is not only made up of unstoppable takes, he combines his beastly game down low by making about 39% of his threes. He's an impressive sixth among some of the most elite power forwards and real plus minus at the position as well. Wood wasn't given a consistent opportunity in his first four seasons. Credit to Detroit coach Dwayne Casey for giving him just that and exposing a future phenom to the basketball world. Number 12, Jaron Jackson Jr. of the Memphis Grizzlies. Triple J has maybe the quickest release of any big man in basketball and is a natural born deep range bomb maker. More so than that, the man can utterly do it all with his versatile game on both sides of the ball. Whether it's making contested catch and shoot threes from another area code, or shots off the bounce featuring some nicely polished handling ability, Jackson Jr. is already a top perimeter talent at big man. He can also attack the rim with abandon. 
Lastly, Jaron provides mesmerizingly quick defensive rotations, racking up a league 10th best 2.1 blocks per game, so don't underestimate the impact that Jaron's had on the Grizz, shockingly sitting in the 8th seed. Memphis holds one of the best up-and-coming big men in basketball. Number 11, Kevin Love of the Cleveland Cavaliers. A 45-37 and 37 shooting line with averages of 18, 10, and 3 dimes still put Kevin Love above some rising youngins at his position. He might be a tad overpaid and he's playing on a bottom feeder, but that production I just mentioned is only found in the most elite players. Problem is, the defensive impact for the aging K-Love is dwindling by the season. Number 10, Danilo Gallinari of the Oklahoma City Thunder. Stunningly, Gallows helped put OKC a game out of home court advantage in the first round with his sneaky hops and patented three-point sniping repertoire. Gallinari was considered a throw-in to the Paul George trade. I guess President Lawrence Frank of the Clippers assumed Danilo's game was on the decline, but the 33-year-olds dropped over 19 points per game on the third-best three-point percentage at power forward. Number 9, Boyan Bogdanovich of the Utah Jazz. Another natural small forward playing at the four, but highlighted by game winners against the Bucks and then the Rockets. Boyan, don't call him Bogdan Bogdanovich, was stellar and clutch for the Jazz all year. In his first season, both in Utah and being trusted as the main four man on a team, the 34 year old Croatian's been his typical shooting sensation like self, scoring over 20 for the West's fourth seed. Number 8, John Collins of the Atlanta Hawks. As Atlanta's youngins develop, and hopefully stay healthy slash not suspended, they're going to be scary good. What they have with the 20 and 10 fiend inside John Collins though, plus the potentially dominant one-two punch in the pick and roll that Trey Young and Clint Capella could become, those three could ultimately become unstoppable for East foes to handle. Number 7, Montrez Harrell of the LA Clippers. He usually plays center, but his pure hustles elevated Montrez into a surefire top 10 power forward. As he's contributing over 18 points per game to the West's second seed, he's taken massive steps forward since coming to LA from Houston in the Chris Paul trade back in 2017. Harrell's posted career-high numbers almost across the board with each successive season in a Clipper jersey. Number 6, Zion Williamson of the New Orleans Pelicans. Simply the rookie phenom takes and does whatever he pleases at the time he wants, and despite little experience, uses his athleticism and strength to post a clip of 59% shooting while dropping a near nightly 24 piece. Staggeringly, that was only in 29.7 minutes. For that and his overall dominance, I can't wait to see Williamson's progression in the next few years. Number 5, DeMontis Sabonis of the Indiana Pacers. The first time All-Star, next to Elite Bigs Jokic and Adetokounmpo, is one of only three big men putting up at least 18 points, 10 rebounds, and 5 assists. DeMontis tops Gobert and Steven Adams in league-wide screen assists and is one of the best pick-and-pop mid-range options across the NBA. From there, it's Sabonis' constant menace-like for opponents, crashing of the glass, and elite passing for a four-man that's so damn valuable for Indy. Number 4, Pascal Siakam of the Toronto Raptors. Spicy P's right behind the brow and the Greek freak for the highest defensive real plus minus at power forward. The defensive aspect of Pascal's game I haven't broken down enough in the Raptor videos I've made this year, but he has an overlooked impact, at least for myself, on the Raptors' success. Siakam's overwhelming 8-11 standing reach plus 7-3 wingspan mixed with his perfectly timed aggressiveness makes him impossible to shoot over. While Pascal's elk-like strides offensively allowed him to put up just under 24 points for the East's second seed, the post kawhi era in Toronto is in great hands with the phenom that Pascal Siakam's turning into. Number 3, Jason Tatum of the Boston Celtics. It's close between he and Spicy P right now. Their numbers are nearly identical. However, I'll give a slight edge to Tatum right now. Fellow Raptor fans, keep in mind I'm not taking into account potential, but every player's talent right now. And the fact is, JT's defense is similarly elite to Spicy's. And if I'm throwing the ball to someone on the other end, between the two in the 2020's playoffs, I must go with the Kobe polished perimeter shot creating master that's Jason Tatum. Number two, Anthony Davis of the LA Lakers. These next two you can probably predict, however, I think it's crucial as fans we appreciate the rare generational talents we're witnessing at this position. AD, in terms of having old school big man qualities, is without a doubt at the very top of the position. 
Also, Anthony's post games by far the most well-rounded of anyone mentioned today with his variety of tools in there. His scoring repertoire ranges from spins, fades, to hooks. Of course, that's all in the post, but there's also his ability to perfectly roll directly to the basket after a screen or pop out to make a very solid 35% of his three-point shots. Locking down the paint, he's third league-wide in blocks, so how could there possibly be a man topping someone so outstanding in every area? Number one, Giannis Dettacumpo of the Milwaukee Bucks. The answer to that last question is, there isn't a man topping Anthony Davis. There's a Greek freak edging out AD for the best four man in the game. You of course know Giannis as an unstoppable slasher, and that's exactly the aspect of his game where after an MVP campaign, Adetokounmpo somehow improved. At 25, with likely still another three years until his prime, Milwaukee's rivals in the East are scared to even consider the thought of Giannis developing a deep-range trigger he can rely on. But this past season, the process to that becoming a reality began. There's already some speculation about Giannis joining my Raptors in free agency if he doesn't win in Milwaukee. I think he definitely could move on. But for now, Wisconsin gets to root for an all-time great in the making, which is great for them. You're the best for tuning in. Leave a thumbs up if you enjoyed. Join the community by hitting subscribe and go check out every squad's best center if you missed it. Small forward rankings on the way. So stay tuned and have a great one, y'all.